And ladies and gentlemen, Ryan Mir! Yeah, hell yeah! Woo! What's up, buddy? Can you hear me? I can hear you. How are you, sir? Can you hear me? I can hear you. I got, I got two minutes. How is life, dude? Life's great, man. Excellent, excellent. Uh, for those that may not know you, Ryan, or what you do, can you please properly introduce yourself? Let us know whereabouts in the world you are at the moment and uh, plug or promote anything you'd like. Uh, my name is Ryan Meir. I'm in Northern Indiana. Indiana. A good place to be if you, if, you, if you don't want to worry about fires or hurricanes or tsunamis and whatnot. Indiana's a nice place to be. Uh, right now I do uh, videos, reaction videos on uh, Ryan Meir on YouTube and uh, do some covers and I don't know, man, I like to check out, I like to discover bands, which is something BG likes to do, man. That's why I kind of stumbled on this place. A buddy of mine said, Hey, check out this guy. Hopefully it was he good. Liked, whatever they said, hopefully it was good it, stuff it, it and not a, bad stuff. It was an Aaron guy. Oh yeah. Aaron. The Aaron guy. Appreciate it, Aaron. <laughs> so uh, how, how long have you been playing music? Uh, like in your personal time? Um, I've been playing guitar for 30 years. In and out of yes. bands and stuff too, or just, just on the side? Yeah, I, I, uh, I was part of a few bands. I had a few three piece bands. My own used to play like blues and, and, you know, 60s, 70s, 80s rock and stuff. And, um, that stuff way well, was fun. And I played a lot of, uh, shitty bars and didn't really go anywhere with it. Then I joined a fucking modern country band. It was the last one I was in because my friends needed a guitar player. So I'm like, sure, man, I'll, I'll jam. And then a couple oh, yeah. years in, I'm like, what the fuck am I doing here? I hate this music and I don't, I'm like ashamed of saying I'm playing somewhere. So I got out of that. <laughs> money is money though. Money is money. Yeah, but the money wasn't that much money. Do you, do you so, primarily uh, prefer Japanese music or is that just what you tend to find gets the most uh, interactions for your particular channel? Um, that's definitely what works best for my channel. Uh, what I listen to mainly on my own time right now is predominantly Japanese music, but there's still a lot of, a lot of, uh, I mean, we're talking uh, top bands for me, if, if I can, off the top of my head, you got like Faith No More, Alice in Chains, Kill Switch Engage, Metallica. So those things are always there. But those bands, if you look at what they do and what they're kind of known for, is why I'm drawn to the Japanese music. They're very kind of innovative bands. And uh, that's what I keep finding. I keep finding that stuff the more I dive into the Asian music. Well, do you and, recall the, the first... Asian reaction that you did? Yeah, it was actually uh, Baby Metal Road of Resistance, and it got blocked. Was That's that the a, first one I did. That was the was that the first one that ever got the the red block for you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was like that. one of my my first that. videos because I did like a few Metallica videos just to kind of like because I knew the band and I was trying to do stuff. It was like just starting out. Somebody suggested Big Metal, so I checked it out. I'm like, this is it was it was fucking amazing, dude. The video was amazing. And they got blocked. And I'm like, oh my God. Like I didn't know shit about YouTube. So I just abandoned them. And uh then I got turned on the Nightwish. And one of the first Nightwish videos, somebody suggested Bandmade. And I checked them out and uh it was fucking all over then, dude. Hell yeah. Which are which Bandmade. which one is your particular favorite bandmade song? Oof. I know that's hard. Okay. Uh, I heard so what today for the first time, by the way. That's pretty pretty good, huh? That was a good one. <laughs> uh, Gion Cho is, 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 has become my favorite song. And, uh, and Daydreaming and from now on. <laughs> you probably haven't heard Gion Cho yet, have you? It's from the band Myco uh, album. No, I have not. I'm on... Uh, 
I can't remember if it's brand new made or new beginnings. Whatever one was after each other, the newer one. All right, it's just so your Yuruka, I think, or something like that, was the one I was gonna do today, but then because it was a uh, Akane's birthday, yeah, uh, Panic suggested I go with so what and his his birthday collage video, which he does fantastic on those things. Oh, right on, yeah. I mean, you can pick any freaking song and celebrate Akane's birthday, dude. That was with a, with any of them. You can just that's the thing, crazy thing about this band. You pick any song and it's a showcase for every band member, you know. What's uh, what's like a a band that you that you jam that we would not expect you to listen to in your spare time? Uh, maybe let's see, uh, Atarashi Gako or Unleash the Archers. Okay, Ar- Archers I just discovered recently. Yeah, yeah, like like two weeks ago. Dude, I I fucking love that band. It's like fucking band made. Unleash the Archers, and then all the other shit I've been listening to for the last rest of my life. I love that fucking band. Do you uh, do you play any video games? I I used to play a lot more before I started doing this stuff. What what are just throw out like top three vid- favorite video games ever made? It's gonna be funny because it's gonna be uh, uh, Gran Turismo and Minecraft and. Uh, uh, what's the, the Grand Theft Auto? What was the Pretty first one you it. said? Curious World. It sounded like you said. It sounded no, like Gran, Gran Turismo. Oh, Gran I thought Turismo. you said Gray and Curious World, and I was like, <laughs> no, that like "Hey, a- yo, what the <laughs> fuck?" <laughs> <laughs> that would be an interesting game. <laughs> it would be no, very... Grand Turismo, man. I I love that game. I I've been uh, every time a new one comes out, I check it out, you know, and get lost in it for a few months, and then. Forget about it. Did you bring <laughs> hot sauce and did you bring whiskey? I just have whiskey. Okay, so <laughs> we'll we'll do we'll do a whiskey a whiskey swig with uh with the trivia. Cool thing about the trivia though is you get to pick the topic. Ryan, what movie or TV show have you seen the most? Or if I ask you trivia on this movie or TV show, you will not get stumped. Seen I, something I won't get stumped on. Won't get stumped if I ask you trivia on this movie or TV show. Uh, uh fucking Back to the Future. Okay, my my yeah. six year old just just uh, discovered that uh the other day. He fell in love with. He likes the first two. Isn't yeah. that awesome? I've been letting kids discover that shit. He, he didn't. Yeah, <laughs> the, one of the how best parts. They are by something that that amazed people that are forty five years old. You're like, yes, I get to watch this movie like three or four times in a row now. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> uh. What's uh yeah. while I while I look up trivia on that, tell me tell me like a odd hobby or something that you do in your spare time when you're not you're not working, you're not hanging out with family, you're not streaming. What's just like another odd hobby or two that you have? Man. Let's see. Uh well, it doesn't really count. I used to skateboard, but that was I realized I was pretty much too old for doing that shit anymore, so I stopped skating. A couple years ago I stopped skating. Um, I don't know, man. That's that's what I do. Is is music and uh, make videos and shit. I love it. That's, that's what, what I, I do, do. Except I don't make music anymore. I like I like I like I have a love hate relationship with working on cars. So I've been doing it for most of my life, and I kindly I got to a point where I don't have to have shitty cars that I got to work on. But it's something that I I did with uh, my grandfather, and. Uh, Got a song out called Grandpa's Garage, and that walking into that garage is it just brings up a lot of memories. So that's something that I like to do. I like to be able to work on on cars and shit, but I don't want to have to work on cars and shit, you know? Do you mean like if someone like completely takes apart a transmission, you you know how to put it back together? Or simpler stuff than that? I not trans I, not transmission stuff, no. But you know, it, maintenance, upkeep. I've 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 swapped motors before. I've worked on transmissions. It's not. I mean, older. I got nothing you. brand new. You know what I mean? But yeah, I mean, if if it if it needs done, I can do it. <laughs> but it's just something. Just wrenching on cars. You know, switching out uh, suspension components and and you know, just shit like that was my my grandfather used to. He had a shop in town where he used to he'd swap out transmissions and fix them and stuff. And 
it was just, it's just a thing. My whole childhood was snow and the grease and oil and just got into your blood. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let's see if we can stump you on this back to the future trivia of which I think this question is extremely hard. So here we go. In back to the future. What is the brand of vehicle that is the truck that Marty wants? He sees it on sale display at the Hill Valley dealership. What did you say it was? Toyota. Toyota Hilux. Toyota is correct! (laughs) See what it lands on. Damn it! I thought that was going to be a hard one. I I hadn't even the slightest idea. The last thing I would have thought is a Toyota truck, of all things, but... uh... (laughs) A hot sauce number eight. I'll do the whiskey shot. I'll do the hot sauce. And uh, damn it. I thought I had you. Five, six, seven, Shit. eight. Eight is cowboy bacon from Argentina. I don't know if you can see that. That sounds That sounds interesting. It doesn't taste like bacon whatsoever. It's, <laughs> it's, it's uh, quite spicy, I would say. Do you, th- you, you watch the, uh, the, the hot ones? Some of them, yeah. It depends who the guest is. Right on. Pretty interesting, man. That that dude is a a hell of an interviewer, that guy. Yeah, for real. You're just shooting it for the bottle. He just loves some some chicken wings. Yeah. You got to love chicken wings to be on that show. Um, (laughs) Let's see. Uh, Damn it, I had a question and I just completely drew a blank. Uh, Well... What's your dream car? We're talking about cars. Sir. What's your what's your dream car? Like money, money doesn't matter. You have infinite money right now. What 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 okay. car do you desire the most? Mouse on fire. From, from from very early on was uh always it's been a Lamborghini Countach, which I I know now being an adult and watching many shows is probably a, like a pain in the ass to drive, but that's always been. You know, from when I was a kid in elementary school, I'm like, yo, I'll never get any kudos just 200 miles an hour and it costs $100,000. It was like something I just knew shit about, you know? And I got I got them in the back of my in my background. I got Lamborghinis back there and stuff. The story of Lamborghini and how he told Ferrari to fuck off and made his own cars to compete with him was just pretty cool as far as I'm concerned, man. That was a you good know, movie. Kind of, yeah. Uh, Ford yeah, vs. Ferrari reading books about that like before anybody else fucking knew about it <laughs> like i'm trying to tell people you don't understand Lam- fruit show lamborghini was amazing <laughs> hell yeah like dude you'll never be able to afford it I'm like yeah you're right but yeah lamborghini is pretty cool is there now is there a, a a concert or two that you've been to that you went to like maybe a friend invited you and this particular artist you weren't really that excited about and they just blew your socks off to the point of which now you're a fan Uh, let's see. I was at a uh, a festival in Memphis, Tennessee, Tennessee Memphis in May. Memphis. A big festival, a lot of different bands, and uh, there was um, was my mic too quiet? No, it's louder. Is that is that too loud now? No, you're you're okay. Okay, and uh, there was uh, Joan Jett, George Thorogood, uh, Creed. Uh, Collective Soul, Run DMC, all playing the same day. And it was, a, it was a shitty, muddy day. And I was like slopping around in mud trying to figure out which band to watch. And I ended up where Collective Soul was. So I'm still not going to say I really like them. But seeing them perform live was was really cool. Because what, what you've heard on the radio, what they did live, they they play like crazy train and shit like that. It went off pretty, pretty good. Uh, and... Joan Jett was was somebody that everybody knows about, but seeing her perform live was pretty was pretty amazing. All the other other concerts I've been to was like it was an intentional thing, you know. So I wasn't I wasn't going not not knowing what was going on. I only found out a couple of years ago that she didn't write "I Love Rock and Roll." I thought I totally thought she wrote that song. Really, <laughs> I didn't know that either. Yeah, that's not her song. That's actually a cover. A cover that is well, it's, it's somebody else's song, so technically it's a cover. Oh, but she's the right. one that kind of like you know blew it up, I guess you'd say, and that's kind of like her staple signature song. But it's interesting that it's a cover. I've always thought. Um, so that 
Well, that was her. That was Joan Jett. That was her own band, though, right? Not the uh, not the Runaways. So I wonder because uh, uh, Asian bands and stuff. A lot of Japanese bands they have uh, like Nemophila. It's a band I love right now, and they're they're kind of blowing up. They're they're uh, they're album streams tonight, right? That's right. Yeah, it's coming out. Uh, well, yeah, fourteenth. Uh, I'm gonna go see him in Dallas uh, in March. Okay. I'm flying there, and there's a chance uh, they should say that we may be able to talk to him. We'll see. We'll see. I'm rooting for you. Yeah, they're coming March 9th to uh, the Echoplex in Los Angeles, and I got it written on the calendar to try and attend. That'll be yeah. fun. Who who's a like a, a bucket list goal interview? Any genre, just somebody that you want on your channel to interview sometime. Doesn't matter how big that artist is. For me, it would be like Paul McCartney, which some people like laugh every time I bring that up. But I've actually spent like two hours deep diving on the internet and I found his manager's email and I wrote him an email. So you never know what could happen. Now that sounds uh, crazy, but you never know. No, I, I just had it. Um, Jerry Cantrell. Really? That seems I, doable. I think it'd be really fun. He's one of my, he's like, this will this will alarm some people, but he's like, like uh, my generation's. Uh, oh shit, I forgot. <laughs> uh, David Gilmore. Okay. Okay. So he he's a guy that he plays. He writes wonderful songs. They're well written songs, and he never overplays anything. And if you if you get into to, I mean, Alice in Chains, obviously, but then his solo stuff. They're crafted so fucking well that there's just never a wrong note, you know. And he's also a very he's he's a very no bullshit kind of guy, and I think it would be really cool to talk to him. Have you tried reaching out to him? Because I feel like that's that would be doable. I don't think I he's someone that's like sought after in interviews like heavily right now. I would think. Yeah, I just started kind of reaching out to people. Um, I I reached out to Unleash the Archers actually a few like last week, and they got back to me today. And said that uh, uh, Britney Slays has, has just had a baby, which is awesome. Congratulations to her. Congratulations. And, uh, working on a new album. And they said, you know what? When we announce the album, get back to us and, uh, you know, reach out to us. I was like, so fucking right on, dude. I'll hopefully be talking to them pretty soon. Yeah, that is kick ass. This, my friend, is for sure going to stop you. Uh, In Back to the Future. What store? What store is located behind Doc and Marty at the Twin Pines Mall? It is not Radio Shack. We got him. Gotcha, bitch. <laughs> we got him. See if anybody else can get it before we uh, we spin it. But uh. That is that is not correct. So I, I actually got it wrong too. I thought it was something else than what the answer is, but uh I had I had no idea. You got me. Have you have you ever been to uh Japan yourself? No. No. I'm uh in June I'm hoping to take my family there. Really? Actually, it's breaking news, BG. What what part? Breaking news. We got uh, breaking news. Uh, <laughs> what part of Japan? Uh Tokyo area, outside Tokyo. Um, I have a, an, an acquaintance out there who I met through the channels I run through, and and uh, it's going to be going to be pretty cool. That's a place that before I had any interest in the music, I always wanted to kind of go there and just just see, you know, just from historical standpoint and cultural standpoint, there's always something that interested me. So I heard they have this, oc octopus ice cream. Would you, Would you try it? Hell yeah, I would. I would too. I would try just about anything once. <laughs> I just mean, I, almost. The editor from there sent me a, a, a bowl of, of dried sardines and almonds. I tried that. It was pretty. It was, it was not the worst thing I ever tasted. What What is your least favorite food? Of all food items, this food hits your tongue, you're gagging. Fucking cabbage. Really? Cabbage. It's <laughs> fine. It's got to be it, right? What about you? What's your least favorite food? It's oh, pickles and mustard, easily both both equally tied. Pickles and mustard. I love things pickled, and I love honey mustard, and I'm constantly tortured on the show. So there's, I have pickles and mustard like nearby at all times, but it like instantly 
makes me gag. The worst one though is the is a pickleback shot. Is the... Hold on, pickles pickles with mustard, or you just don't like pickles and you don't like mustard? I don't like pickles, and I also separately do not like mustard. But you have you like pickled things, and you like. But like I like pepperoncinis and, and pickled pepperoncinis, pickled jalapenos, pickled yellow peppers. But for some, and I don't like uh, cucumbers, so I don't know if that kind of is relevant to pickles. But <laughs> so something is pickled, you're cool with it. But pickles themselves, fuck that. Yeah, exactly. Oh. Nailed it right oh. there. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I've got I've got like 200 sounds and graphics at all times ready to go, just in case. So. I, uh, I had- I had a thing here, but I have it hooked up. It, it would have all sorts of effects too. But I was too slow. You gotta get you gotta get that thing going, and you can you can wire it so you can like do the you know the hello Ryan all the all, all that cool stuff too. Yeah. <laughs> That's what just me though. What do you got planned uh, after this? After we're done here, what are you doing after that? Uh, I actually probably need to redo a song I just did a cover for for a uh, bandmate community. So it turns out when you got to cover uh, bandmate acoustic songs, they're not so easy. <laughs> Even the stripped down acoustic stuff is is not so easy. So I went through one today and uh, did what I could, but I think I need to redo it. So that's probably what I'm going to do. I'm going to grab my guitar and uh, try and play it correctly. On on average, how long would you say it takes you to to listen to one of one of their songs and then a couple hours later, a day or two later, how long does it take until you're comfortable with hitting the record button? I'm just not comfortable with it. <laughs> <laughs> the thing the thing about their songs, like some of their older stuff, probably stuff you're coming across now, have some riff based music. And you can listen to it and be like, okay, there's the riff. And like a lot of songs, if you got the riff, you kind of got the song. With uh, their newer stuff, it's it's very, it's it's uh, not so cut and dried. You know, you think there's a riff, then you listen to it, and you're like, "Where's there's no riff in this riff?" And you have to figure out five or six different parts in order to kind of play it by yourself. You know, there, there's moments where there's a riff on a, a pre bridge chorus pre something. You know, <laughs> but then it only happens once. <laughs> Throw a little quick lick in there. Yeah, so uh, usually, I, and if I mean, I've got some videos out there where I go through their songs, and I kind of pick out um, maybe what's going on behind the solos, or as I'm listening to it, I'll figure out a riff here and there. But it, it rarely, it's not like an old Metallica song where you figure out a couple riffs and that's like the whole song, you know? You figure out a couple riffs or a bandmate song and you got like eight more to go. Yeah. It's insane. You're only getting started. Yeah. Hell yeah. So I don't know, if I figure out a song, if I sit down with like an Alice in Chains song, it'll be within 15, 20 minutes I'll have the song. Did you Band say did, did you say STP or also earlier was one of your faves, or did you not mention them? I didn't say that, but uh, that was a good implication. It's a good band. They kind of seem like in the same alley that uh, some of the bands you had mentioned, but what did you think of when Chester joined STP temporarily? Um, I didn't really pay attention to it honestly but i think dude he, he's a fucking great singer Hell but i was. i think that the the uh the leo brothers they're super fucking talented and I, I i hate that they had they think they had to stay within the stp like namesake to do anything relevant they should have been able to go on and do right well they did they did a uh army of anyone with uh robert or richard patrick from filter mm-hmm it's a great fucking album, dude. They had one record and it was fantastic. Every song was great. And uh, uh, Richard Patrick, he had an interview and he's like, I wanted to keep doing shit. And they're like, no, we're going to go get Scott and make some money. <laughs> those, those gigs, those gig uh, tours for real. They'd be paying. Yeah. yeah. So I heard of the, uh, uh, what's his name? Scott. What's his last name? Waylon. 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 He called him. Called up the Delio brother and was like, "Hey, you want to make a million dollars? Let's go on tour." You know, that was all. That's a, all it was to him. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. Well, dude, I, I had a lot of fun doing this, man. I appreciate you chatting with me. Uh, can you can you please plug uh, one more time anything you'd like to promote or plug before we let you go? Sure, man. Uh, check out anywhere streaming is available. There's Ryan Ear. 
a small place in big world. So now I put out a couple years ago, I recorded, played it all myself, mixed it and all that shit. Um, and, uh, check out my channel, Ryan Mir on YouTube. I do uh, reaction videos. I do some covers and some deep dive stuff about music. And, uh, also, Gaijin Guys podcast, something I'm part of. It's excellent. Check it out Thank if you get a chance. Sir. Gaijin Guys is excellent. Yeah, man. This is fun. Hell yeah. It. Let's end it on a, a quick whiskey swing. Well, Ryan, I appreciate your brother. Cheers. Thanks, man. Woo! Good time. Hell yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, Ryan Mayer! Give me a hell yeah. Thank you, brother. Have a great day. I appreciate it.